Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here today. And uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Got a lot of uh, great content that's going to be coming out and going to be available here soon. So I'd love for you to subscribe and follow along with me on the channel here. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, this is going to be a follow-up video. Uh, I've had uh, quite a few people that have asked me uh, if I could do this uh, particular video. Uh, a few months back, there was a uh, large BIOS update before the Raven Ridge APU line came out that had a lot of AGISA updates uh, and I'm running a ASRock uh, AB350 Gaming K4. I'm running this motherboard right here. They put it up here where you can see it. Alright, so this is the AB350 uh, Gaming K4 um, and it's the Fatality line by ASRock. So I'm running this uh, board with uh, a Ryzen 7 1700 uh, CPU but that's not the issue. The issue gets to had gotten to be with with RAM, and so I've got a set of uh, Vengeance Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is DDR4 3000 speed. This is a two by eight gig kit, 16 gigs total. So what happened was when I bought this kit originally, I did not check the list against the motherboard manufacturer to make sure that this RAM was approved to operate at the rated speeds. So what happened was when I first built this PC. All I could get was out of the clock standard boxing of 2133. I could not get it to overclock at all. And there were a lot of people that had this same problem. So I, about a few months back, there was a, a large BIOS update, and I did that BIOS update and did a video about it. And I've had a lot of response from folks on that video, and I'll link it above. But that video kind of walks through and talks about the actual BIOS update itself. But what they've asked me is if I would include a video that actually showed going into the BIOS screen and actually what I did to get the uh, the overclocks and everything to work. So that's what I'm going to do today. This video today is going to be uh, me going into the BIOS, capturing it with the camera here so that you guys can see exactly what I did on the overclock. Now I'm running this machine right now at uh, 3.925 gigahertz and I've got my RAM uh, run at XMP for 20, uh, 2933 and so uh, this board won't run at 3000, but it'll run it if it's 3000 speed, it'll run at 2933. And I've had no issues with that. So I'm going to help you guys. I'm going to walk you through it today. And uh, hopefully, this will help you out. So let's take a look and see what we got to do. Okay, guys, uh, I am booted into the BIOS here. Now, before I reset everything, I just want to show you here how I've got everything running currently. Okay. So as you'll as you'll see here on the screen, the UF, UEFI version that I'm running is 4.60. So I have not I have not done any other updates since I did the last update uh, a couple of months back when I did the initial video. So uh, there's some other BIOS stuff that's out now for Ryzen 2. I haven't I haven't updated or, or done anything with those BIOS uh, updates. So if you're not if you're not going to be running on those and you're running the same setup that I am. Basically, as I walk you through this, I'll be able to pretty much guarantee you, you'll be able to get it to run like mine is running now. So, uh, and then later, I'll, I'm going to do some testing on the other BIOS updates and see if it, it does anything else for it. But um, theoretically, it shouldn't. If it does anything, it should make some additional um, uh, memory modules more compatible. Um, but, you know, I, I, I really can't troubleshoot if you're using a different memory module than I am but if you run the same uh, LPX Vengeance that I am then this should take care of you. So right now I'm running P4.60 and I've got a, a Ryzen 7 1700 and there's my my clock speed 3925 megahertz and then I've got 16 gigs of memory and as you can see right here it's running at DDR4 2933 and these are 3000 speed sticks alright so uh, and then real quick and advanced <clears throat> I'm sorry, an o OC tweaker. Um, you know, I've got everything set up in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe all this out, and we're gonna redo it because it'll look a little different when you first go into this versus everything already being plugged in. So I'm gonna walk you through that. Okay, so we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna load UEFI defaults. Basically, what this will do is it will um, uh, take everything um, back. To it won't it won't undo the BIOS, but it'll just load the default settings. All right, so we're just going to load defaults here, and then basically it'll take us 
take us back and then we can uh, F10 will save and exit and the system will reboot and when it reboots this time of course to get into your UEFI or BIOS screen um, you just hit the delete key once you see Azeroth flash up on the screen here we will hit the delete key and we'll load back into the BIOS and as you can see here we are back to standard we're at 3000 megahertz speed and as you can see down here at the bottom our RAM is running at 2133 okay so we are now back at standard setup we're still at the same BIOS 4.60 now you want to do your BIOS updates and all before you go in to do this but basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into OC Tweaker and when we get to OC Tweaker this is what your screen will look like okay now this first item says ASRock setting now there's some other options here but you don't have to change that leave it as ASRock setting when you get to this next one where it says auto you'll do manual okay and when you get to manual this is where you can plug in to do your overclocking now on my system everybody's chip is going to be different so there's something called a silicon lottery and so your chip could overclock a little more than mine or it could go a little less now this chip I actually my my Ryzen 7 I can run this at 4 gigahertz but it pushes the voltage a little high on this B350 motherboard and I'm not comfortable leaving it at a high setting like that for a long period of time because I use this machine a lot at some point I'm going to upgrade this machine and go over onto the X line for boards and then I'll push it even harder there but what I found in my testing was 3925 was my was the perfect spot where I could run this and I could keep my voltages where I was comfortable leaving my voltages out now for those of you that have never really done overclocking um, it's kind of trial and error you just have to work your way through now you can try these settings it may work for you or it may not but this is how it made mine work okay so my frequency is 3925 and now my voltage that I have to run at is 1.38750 okay that's my voltage that I run at there we want SMT enabled that's your simul that's your multi-threading that allows your um, you know your 16 threads to run behind the 8 cores now when you get down to this next section DRAM timing configuration XMP 2.0 profile you see right here profile number one this is what it sees my my memory at so if I go right here to load XMP settings do XMP 2.0 profile one and it's automatically going to load 2933 right here okay and then uh, as we scroll down uh, we don't have to change any of this other stuff all you do is enable XMP profile and that takes care of that and then we're gonna go over here real quick on advanced tab and we're just gonna check these you want to make sure that cool and quiet is enabled and then these next two you want them to be disabled okay they should be that way but you just want to verify that and F10 to save and exit hit enter and we will reboot our PC and when the PC comes back up when you see the ASRock um, screen come up just hit the delete key it'll take you back into the BIOS and when we go back into the BIOS we are now overclocked at 3925 and our DDR4 2933 that's our XMP profile okay and that's all you have to do um, the only thing that you may have to uh, play around with will be your your clock settings here now let me give you a piece of advice when you first start with this if you've never really done any overclocking overclock the CPU first get the CPU stable and once the CPU is stable so basically um, you know you'll start you'll, you'll increase um, processor you'll increase your speed in increments until it won't reboot and then you'll increase your voltage so you kinda you have to go back and forth with that for a little while there's some great uh, videos that guys have out there on actually doing overclocking and what the process is but um, get your get your CPU set first and once the CPU is good then go in and do your uh, enable your XMP on your memory and the XMP enabling XMP is pretty easy after this BIOS update now before I did that BIOS update this would not work 
the machine would not boot on XMP um, profile. I would have to let it run at standard 2133. So uh, I'm just gonna F10 to exit out and say yes, and we'll let the PC boot up here. Um, and basically, that's all there is to it. So hopefully, this video uh, helps you guys. Um, like I said, I've, I've had quite a few people that have asked me about this over the last couple of months. So uh, I had gotten a, um, a message from from a viewer the other day, and he was asking about this as well. And I said, you know what, I, I'm, I'll sit down and, and get that put together. So that's kind of where we are uh, on this here today. So anyway, uh, PC's back up and everything's running. So I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and follow along with me. And uh, leave any comments or questions down below. I'd love to answer those for you. And I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video.